The Philadelphia Eagles offense is broken. This is the Fantasy Sports Boss with a Monday Night Football wrap-up. The Seattle Seahawks upsetting, even though they were at home, upsetting the Philadelphia Eagles, um, handing the Eagles their third straight loss on the season. And, and uh, without a doubt now, you could say that the Eagles are starting to spiral. Um, this is a game uh, that, that the Eagles should have won. They're the better team than Seattle. They're facing a backup quarterback in Drew Locke, but they could not get it done. And Jalen Hurts came in uh, battling a cold, COVID, the flu, whatever it is, through two more interceptions. He's been a turnover machine this year, and this is not what you want to see uh, heading into the fantasy football semifinals. Uh, let's start with the Eagles. So Jalen Hurts, 17 of 31, 143 yards uh, no touchdowns, two interceptions, just an awful passing performance. And again, when you have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard, and a strong um, option out of the backfield, both with DeAndre Swift and, and uh, Kenneth Gainwell, there's no excuse for that. And listen, as great of a player as Hurts is, and great is a strong word. I'm not ready to put him in the great category yet, but as, as good of a player as Hurts is, and, and he is, the turnovers have been a major problem all year, especially of late. And uh, a little bit more than 20 fantasy points. And really, when it comes to your quarterback in fantasy football, there's there's benchmarks uh, for each position. For me, uh, you know, 22 and, 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 and up, that's where I want my quarterback to be. Uh, to be. And, uh, you know, Hertz was just under that, I believe, a 21 uh, and change in a six-point-passing um, six passing QB league. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. And, and um, you know, he did run for 82 yards that, and two touchdowns, so that saved his day. Um, but passing game, not good, and it's trickling down to the receiver. So A.J. Brown was the leading receiver, uh, five catches for 56 yards. That's just a little more than 10 PPR points. A.J. Brown's in a slump, too. All right? Devontae Smith, five for 50. Why is Devontae Smith's numbers going down in addition to hurt struggles? Because Dallas Goddard is there. Goddard, Goddard went four for 30. All right, we've talked about this many, many, many times. When Goddard's out, Devontae Smith goes crazy. When Goddard's back, then Smith uh, jogs back to low-end wide receiver two numbers instead of being a high-end two or even a low-end one. Really, he's a low-end one when Goddard is out. Uh, I spoke this week about DeAndre Swift, who's been in a massive uh, slump. This was a get-right game for him, and it really was. Um, well, it was really volume-driven, 18 for 74, only 4.1 a carry. Uh, two catches for one yard. He's not being used in a passing game. And again, this goes back to the summer when I said running quarterbacks don't throw to their receivers. Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, uh, you know, Anthony Richardson before he got hurt. They don't throw to their receivers, their, uh, their backs. They're going to keep it and run instead of throwing it. So this is another avenue that we, we can use next year to evaluate backs in PPR leagues. Um, on the Seattle side, listen, Drew Locke, who just has been an awful quarterback in this league since coming in, has been good. Like, he looks like he has developed nicely under Pete Carroll. 22 of 33, 208 and a touchdown uh, he, uh, to Jackson Smith and Jigba. And Smith and Jigba went four for 48 and a score. Um, DK Metcalf, five for 78. Eh, you know, certainly you expected more. Tyler Lockett was left behind three for 21. And one of these three are always going to be left behind each week. Um, Kenneth Walker had a solid day, 19 for 86. The workload was, was, was surprising to me because Zach Charbonnet had – Moved to even plus 50% snap share of late when both were on the field together. But Charbonnet only got four carries uh, for 16 yards. Walker, three for 26 in a passing game. Charbonnet didn't even catch a pass. Um, so going forward, Geno Smith should be back next week. But even if he doesn't play, Drew Locke at least has shown that he can spread the football uh, to his, to his uh, wide receivers and get at least two of them involved. Um, from a fantasy perspective there. All right, guys. Uh, Waiver Wire Tuesday. We will be live later on today. Um... And I keep forgetting to do this. I, I wanted to discuss um, players' current values relative to where they were drafted. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, and, you know, even even after the season's over, I have some videos. We, we're going to do a, an exhaustive post-analysis because I have a lot of thoughts on, on my mind. I started talking about some of that yesterday when it came to the running backs. A lot of lessons that we can take into next season. So we'll talk about that uh, as we go ahead. So hit that subscribe button, all right? Make sure you're also a member. Uh, three different member level levels, no obligation. Streams are always free, as I always say. Um, I don't want anybody to ever think that the streams are not going to be free because they're always going to be free. That's the staple of this channel. So, um, But the, the membership just gives you some uh, additional access, um, priority to comments, uh, free draft guide if you, if you pick the gold level, um, all that stuff. So anyway, guys, hit that subscribe button. We will chat later.